One of the classic disciplines you find us involved in is creating surfaces for live switching. And uh, our pet live switcher would be the Atom from Blackmagic Design. Uh, it's really cool in many ways. We like the protocol very much and it has so many parameters we can adjust. So it's also really great for demonstrations. But we do support other live switches today as well, like a vMix and Carbonite and TriCaster is coming up. Uh, and if you know some system that you want us to support, please come to us and we'll consider creating a device call for it because we have a super cool universal operating system running on all these controllers that allow you to install support for new broadcast devices as they come out. Now, uh, today I want to introduce to you the LiveFly. Uh, we have Minifly and Airfly introduced already, and LiveFly is in between those two. So if you look at those two controllers I have right here, this is the Minifly. Six input uh, buttons here, uh, utility buttons up here, cut auto and a little slider and so on. So it is more or less like a big brother, right? And the big brother is cool in the sense that it has nine buttons in the, in, in the row here and they have displays. So uh, contrary to down here where you had to hijack the displays up here to um, uh, show what these buttons do, or just rely on the sources being one through six, then here you have absolute freedom using the OLED displays to create labels. That's really cool. But other than that, this is just like scaling up what you have down here, right? Also, this features modularity. So if you look at the side here, we have a connector. And then if you take uh, another module like this, they will snap together magnetically like this. You can break them apart again like this. And they actually connect electrically to each other so that you can extend the surface like this uh, by adding multiple of these modules. That's pretty cool as well. I want to boot it up right now so you can see what it does. So uh, what we have is in all the units, we have PoE. So let's just plug in this cable and then we should see that the unit is booting up. Uh, we'll have some logo work coming up here on the controller. Yes, um, and it's now connecting to an ATEM switcher. There we go. I think I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see what is on the controller. This controller has all the signature technologies you find from Skahoy. That would be OLED displays, RGB backlight, LED bars, multi-level LED bars that is, and uh, we have the four-way buttons, we have modularity as well, and PoE. So you just get everything in this unit. And uh, I'm really excited to show it to you. So uh, in this demonstration, I have set up this row not to switch um, nine sources on an ATEM switcher, but instead to uh, stay with um, uh, six sources here. They are hooked up with the shift key over here. So when I press the shift key, you'll see how neatly they adapt to the fact that I press the shift key. So now I can select this source, PTC2, PTC1, as I want. And if we go over to the ATEM software, you can see PTC1 and 2 is here. So again, if I, if I hold the shift key down, I press seal. Yes, uh, you see that this is in fact what you get with the shift key and the OLED displays. It's really easy to operate sources beyond six. Now, why did I do it? Just because I thought it was fun to uh, show you how color coding these blue, these are blue, I uh, am changing sources on auxiliary two. You want to see it? Yes, auxiliary two, I'm changing sources there. So for some reason, whatever reason, I decided that for this particular live show, I want instead to have direct access to the auxiliary bus just next to the ME bus. And of course I color coded it differently. And that's why you want RGB backlight. That uh, is really the key when you want to create a user-friendly solution where it's um, intuitive uh, to understand the difference um, or, or understand how the control options are divided uh, onto the hardware components. Okay, back to the controller. So um, we also up here, we have um, a section which is set up for audio control. So in fact, these buttons are four-way buttons. And now you'll see what that means. Now, uh, let's just first go to the audio section of the ATEM switcher. So here we have uh, sliders. And notice how these sliders um, are reflected in the display. So as I pull them, you'll see changes in the values. Yes, okay. So what does these buttons do? I can press the buttons on the side. I can even press and hold it down and it will simply turn up and down the volume. So if I go to the other side of the button and hit this edge, I'm turning up the volume again. And that is true for all these audio channels. I can adjust volume or tweak the volume of these sources. So how useful is that, you might think? Well, 
it is pretty useful if all you need to do is to have some kind of audio control without the luxury of an actual fader. If you want an actual fader, we have that too, but I think there's just no way you can beat these four way buttons in the flexibility they give you. In a, a single elastomer button, you have access to encoder action. So that's values up and down. And um, that's some of the super cool flexibility you get in the new controllers that we have coming out right uh, at the moment. Okay, let's move on and then see, you actually have true encoders in uh, the module as well. So this uh, iris for cam one is set up um, so I can adjust iris for camera one for whatever reason. And uh, I'm adjusting it here. It's in such fine steps that I probably should press it and then turn, um, yeah, and turn it. So what you see here is that I have a fine mode and a coarse mode, which requires less turning to adjust uh, the iris values. Over here, we have an example of setting DVE parameters. And um, yeah, honestly, I think this is really just examples that I have included to, to show you what is uh, going on. Then uh, we also do have a slider here. So uh, let's take a look at that. So the slider even has a cool um, LED bar associated with it. That is mostly for coolness, if you ask me. Um, but um, yeah, it's there. It's not going to go away. There's no discount to get if you ask to have it not delivered. It's coming with your Lifefly. Uh, cut button, uh, auto function. We have fade to black, yes. And then, of course, we have the shift key you saw just before, which will also affect how I set up these two user buttons. So the user buttons are really cool in that they have a wide screen OLED display that show what they do. We have uh, upstream key on and off here and upstream key on and off here. If I press the shift key, you can see it's uh, going to downstream key instead. So now it's a downstream stream key on and off. Uh, really uh, useful uh, right there. OK, that's the live fly. Um, I think there's really not much more to say, but it's a really cool device. And of course, like any of our controllers, you can install additional or substitute those device cores on the controller. So it can work with video routers and recording decks and cameras and even software solutions of various sorts. There are no limits because you have the Unisketch operating system running on the Lifeline. <laughs>